This version of Picto introduces a major new feature, the map. You can access the map by clicking on the map icon on the top right corner. And based on the selected source, uh, Picto will display all the cluster of images for which um, a GPS information is available. As you can see, I have uh, clusters all over the places here, and a little icon on the top right indicates how many images are inside that cluster. I can zoom in, and as I, as I zoom in, of course, the cluster is going to divide into more specific clusters uh, or, or even more specific location um, for all those images. There is a little I button. I can click on it and it's going to display all the images in a grid that are inside that particular cluster. If you click on the uh, cluster itself, you can see a rough estimate of the perimeter in which uh, these images are located. I zoom in, cluster divide even further, and until I get to the exact location of a specific image, uh, which is displayed by this little arrow at the bottom. From this view, I can uh, click on that button, see all pictures in this area to move to the grid view for that particular area. And I, you can see that uh, a small filter has been added to my search field, uh, which represents the uh, area in which I'm looking at. You can also, from that view, double click on a specific image to go immediately in the instant view for that image. Again, even on large groups, you can uh, easily navigate, find a specific image, double click, and there you are. So this is the map in Picto 1.2. We hope you like it. Smart albums are a new addition to Picto, and they let you create dynamic collections of images based on rules that get applied on the fly. So with smart albums, it's really easy to create a collection such as this one, where I want to see all the images that have four stars. So as you can see, I've created a rule telling me that it should filter on the rating being equal to four stars. You can create a new smart album from either the file menu by picking the new smart album item or using the plus button at the bottom of the user interface. So let's create a new smart album now. In this dialog, I can enter a name. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to create an album that displays three people in Japan. Here below, I have my criteria. So I can add a new criteria by clicking on the plus button or remove it by clicking on minus. I'm going to um, use a criteria based on the source and I'm going to specifically take a um, look at uh, sources being uh, Apple Aperture catalogs. I'm going to add another criteria uh, and this time I'm going to use um, AI. So as you can see from that little pop-up pop menu I can pick various uh, types of criteria, so some based on panorama, based on AI scores, based on localization, based on um, EXIF or IPTC metadata. Here I'm going to pick a specific AI score that is the number of people in the image and I'm going to set it to 3. I'm going to add another criteria and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter on the EXIF and I'm going to pick a specific lens. So some criteria, they propose you a list of all the available values that are already there in the, in the catalog. So in that case, the lens gives me the list of all the lenses that are known to pick to. Um, here at the bottom, you can see that there are nine, nine matching representations. So nine images match that uh, 
set of criteria. Uh, I can hit the little refresh button to refresh the view. Uh, here I can see my uh, representations. You can uh, very easily disable one or another of the uh, rules that you have set up just to see what, what, how it affects the results. So, for example, by not clicking on the people count, I, I get 115 matching representations. You can also ma make more complex rules by uh, playing with the um, with the little pop-up here that tells you whether all the all the rules should be uh, all the criteria should be ma should be met or whether only one of them uh, should be met or none of them should be met. You can also even complexify further by adding groups, and you can specify how rules within groups should be uh, uh, applied. So, for example, you can say that I want the three um, rules at the top being applied or uh, the rule at the bottom being uh, applied. And uh, this is going to create uh, a mix between AND and OR operators in your query. Once you're happy with your uh, smart album, you can just click OK and it's going to add it to the, into the sidebar. Smart albums behave as albums when it comes to export. So you can export your smart album, and in that case, the nine uh, files that are um, nine images that are in those in that album are going to be exported. So these are smart albums in uh, in Picto, and we hope you you like it and use it. Another area that has been vastly improved is the display of the title for the current selection. In the past, this uh, display was sometimes confusing and uh, the information was not always accurate. So we've reworked that and now the title uh, clearly displays how many representation, how many instance, and in a more readable format also what are the start and end date of the current selection. So as you move between um, sources, this display is going to refresh. It takes a little bit of time sometimes in the case of large volumes, but the information should always be accurate. So if I move, for example, to the card, to the map view, um, I get the same representation. If I go to panorama, it's going to update uh, accordingly. Here, remember in Panorama you always have less representation and less instance uh, available because Panorama applies some aesthetics filtering on the images that are getting displayed. This version of Picto comes with a number of bug fixes and improvements, and some of them are worth uh, mentioning now. First of all, we uh, vastly improved the performance of uh, resizing the window uh, or even um, resizing the, uh, the bottom part in, in the case of very large quantities of images. Um, this should feel much smoother and much faster now. We've also improved consistency of the user interface by making sure that the contextual menu that it's very handy that you can get in the grid view uh, is also available anywhere else. So this menu is uh, lets you create, for example, an album from a specific selection of images or uh, launch the editing process. And it was only available in the grid view. Now, if you go to Panorama uh, and pick a, a specific image, you can access uh, all the relevant actions that um, that are, that are useful at that particular point of time. So, for example, launching the edit, uh, sharing, showing the metadata uh, is now uh, possible within Panorama. Same for the instant view. If I double click on a specific image, uh, I can now access the contextual menu from uh, the view, uh, the detail view, but also from the, um, from the little images representation thumbnails that are below uh, this image. So consistency is, uh, is now uh, enforced throughout the user interface via those menus. 